Hello everyone, I'm Senator Mary Landrieu and welcome to my January installment of Mary's Mail. I hope you found these to be informative because I sure enjoy sharing this information with you. Each month I try to respond to a few emails and pieces of mail that you send to my office and this month I've decided to respond uh, to post on my Facebook as well. So this week we received lots of questions uh, from Louisiana about the Louisiana or the National Oil Spill Commission uh, and how that uh, might affect our state. I've received questions about the House effort to repeal the Affordable Health Care Act and I'd like to talk about that as well. So our first question today comes from Lynn from St. Amant. Lynn writes, the National Commission on BP Oil Spill recommends 80% of the fines against BP are used to restore the Gulf. It seems only fair. What must be done to make this happen? First of all, I agree with Lynn and thank her so much for writing. I'd actually suggested uh, over six months ago that a large portion, 80% or more, of this penalty, which could be anywhere from $5 billion to $30 billion, depending on what the courts and the Justice Department decide BPOs based on the amount of oil actually spilled into the Gulf, which is the current law. To make this actually happen, Congress is going to have to pass a bill. So I introduced one in the last Congress with Congressman uh, Steve Scalise uh, from uh, the 1st Congressional District. He and I have companion bills. We hope to build bipartisan support from other members of both the House and the Senate. It's a major piece of legislation, I'd say our most important. We want to have 80% of the penalty money directed to the Gulf Coast area where the injury occurred and divide the money appropriately between the five states. And by appropriately, I think the bulk of the money should go to actual environmental restoration where the damage was done. Much of it occurred in Louisiana. So this money would give us a jump start on our coastal restoration efforts and I'm excited about the possibilities of getting this passed. I'm also pleased the President and the Administration have given their support uh, to dedicating a quote significant amount. We're hoping to get them to say 80 percent soon, but a significant amount uh, to the Gulf Coast and then making sure Louisiana gets um, its fair share in line with the damage that was caused you know, to our coast. So thank you for writing. At the beginning of the 112th Congress, I invited people to share their thoughts with me on Facebook. Out of nearly 100 suggestions, one theme was repeated again and again, and that was jobs. Johnny from Moss Bluff wrote on my Facebook wall, how do we have economic recovery without jobs? How do we end this recession without jobs? Senator, what are you doing to work on job creation? And I want to just respond, Johnny, that is the question of the hour. And I'm proud to tell you that as the chair of the Small Business Committee, I passed a major piece of legislation uh, with and was built in a bipartisan fashion to help get access or to help get capital to small businesses throughout the country, businesses on Main Street, uh, in downtown uh, Moss Bluff, in downtown Lake Charles, in downtown New Orleans, in rural areas whether it's Tallulah or Delhi or Homa, Louisiana. And we need to do more uh, than just have our eyes on Wall Street and bailing out the big guys and have our eyes on Main Street and helping the little guys to grow. And that's what my bill did. Um, it did many things. One, it provided uh, almost um, well, billions of dollars in tax cuts to small businesses. It also created a $30 billion new lending program for healthy banks so that banks could then take that money and lend it to small businesses. Only community banks uh, qualify. Uh, in addition, it provided um, some very targeted tax cuts. For instance, if a person starts a business out of their home, they can deduct those costs of starting that business, which is kind of an easy um, a way to uh, take off a thousand or twenty four hundred dollars off the top of your tax liability. Um, no capital gains paid for a whole year for anyone investing uh, in a small business whether that business is in Louisiana or New York or Connecticut or California. Uh, in addition I'm leading the effort to fight um, the, or to fight for the repeal of the 1099 reporting requirement which was put in the health care bill to generate money 
is a bad idea. It does generate money, but it's a bad idea. It's another burden to small business, and it needs to be repealed. So, in summary, I'm going to. I've already passed a major piece of legislation that's hitting Main Street now and should have some positive impact. I'm continuing to build a portfolio as chairman of this committee of bills that can help and we will continue to reduce taxes and regulations in ways that I can to increase entrepreneurship and competitiveness right here in America with our small businesses. Our final piece of mail today is from Jesse in Opelousas. He writes, uh, Senator Landrieu, my son Ethan developed a brain injury in the hospital 11 days after he was born. He's profoundly deaf, he wears glasses, and has a feeding tube in his stomach. We have primary insurance with the Office of Group Benefits for the state of Louisiana. My son may never walk, talk, or eat on his own, but because his parents work for a living, he cannot get disability or Medicaid. We're not rich people. We have a four-year-old also to support. We've done everything we're supposed to do as good citizens. We're not asking for anything for us. The health care reform that's being debated now has kept our insurance company from kicking Ethan off of their policy because of his pre-existing condition. We hope that it's not repealed. If it was, Ethan would have no insurance and we would not qualify for Medicaid. You know, this is just um, a heart-wrenching story about parents who are expecting a healthy baby and then something else comes. But these parents who will love this child and take care of him for the rest of his life, I'm proud to support a health care bill that actually does so many good things for them. One, children like this and their parents cannot anymore be kept off of an insurance policy. They can't hit lifetime limits because lifetime limits have been completely eliminated. They are illegal. That's one of the reasons why I've supported this health care bill. In addition to the fact that it saves the country a trillion dollars over 10 years, the fact that children can stay on their parents' uh, health insurance up to the age of 26. In addition, almost 2 million non-elderly Louisianians have some type of pre-existing condition like heart disease, high blood pressure, arthritis, or even cancer that prevents them sometimes from getting insurance. The bill will outlaw uh, that so that they can, in fact, get insurance that's affordable. So I've said to those that seek to repeal this bill, you must put something better or equal in its place, and, and I will not support a repeal unless that's done. So we will see. This is a very important debate. Um, I'm so sad for our situation in Opelousas, but grateful uh, that the family wrote to me uh, to tell me that they do support and are grateful that they're able to keep their insurance because of the, um, the health care bill that we have now in law. So again, I'm open to other ideas, but only if they, you know, for health care, but only if they meet the objectives of lowering costs for taxpayers, expanding coverage for 32 million Americans, uh, and reining in insurance companies so that they can't deny coverage or raise it exceedingly or kick people off at the time when they need the most help. So thank you for sending me your questions. Please continue to share any of these comments with me by visiting uh, my website, landrew.senate.gov. That's landrew.senate.gov. Or sending a letter the old-fashioned way. I look forward to hearing from you and responding to your questions and concerns. It's an honor to represent you here in the United States Senate. Thank you so much for letting your voice be heard.